The new GTA Online weekly update just introduced the long-awaited benefactor Vorschlag hammer to the game along with some really solid discounts on vehicles like the Postlude, the Conjo SJ, the Hot Ring Hellfire, the Reinhardt, the Western Reaver, Overflawed Tyrant, and of course the Western Annihilator helicopter. But today on the show, I wanted to spotlight our two new free vehicles available this week that any player can just jump in, get in the game, and unlock these cars. One is a super underrated weaponized sports classic vehicle, and the other is a DLC vehicle that, in fact, honestly, I would even go so far as to say that it's achieved legendary status when it comes to DLC cars in GTA Online. I'm going to be showcasing to you guys how you can unlock them. We're going to check out what the customization options for these vehicles are like and also test out their performance and I will review them both. I just started the series last week and the responses were overwhelmingly positive, so I'm coming back at you for episode two this week and I hope you enjoy. With that being said, let's get started. All right, jumping into our first free vehicle, it's of course our Diamond Casino and Resort Podium Vehicle. This week, it is the Pegasi Zentorno. This car originally released with the High Life update in May 2014. It's inspired by the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento, which is pretty evident in like the overall shape of the car, clearly in those hexagonal rear vents and also the distinctive roof and the hood vents that the Pegasi Zentorno has. It's got superior cornering capabilities. It's got super fast acceleration. Honestly, the Zentorno competes very, very closely with top tier supercars in the game, which is awesome to see because it's such an old car that was added to the game. It achieves speed surpassing even the Entity XF and of course the Turismo R. Those are very closely comparable though overall. It's super low to the ground, but of course the suspension is not adjustable, unfortunately, but nonetheless, that's gonna enhance your stability just outright because it's already low to the ground. But one thing you have to watch is you're a little bit vulnerable to flipping on uneven surfaces for some reason. It's like a top heavy car despite it being very slammed to the ground but overall it's highly responsive it has great handling and allows for very agile cornering but the sensitivity for some players may be a little bit challenging maybe if you're on keyboard and mouse for some reason a roller player though is not going to have trouble controlling this car additionally here while the vehicle overall and generally maintains good control the grip can also be compromised like i said on those rough terrains so be careful when taking it off road it's obviously not meant for that and obviously like the bottom protective layer of the vehicle is going to cause all sorts of traction issues when it rubs against the dirt or dusty desert trails. But with that said, enough on that, let's check out the car's performance on the track. All right, so this is kind of the customization scheme and paint job I went for with the Pegasi Zentorno. Again, absolutely incredible DLC vehicle in this game. Came out very early on, summer of 2014, into the life cycle here of GTA Online. And basically what I went for today was a nice little bit of a green and red look. I remember way back on the 360, I basically customized the Zentorno the same way, but it was just slightly different. This is still, I think to this day, like 10 years later, almost 11 years later, my favorite type of way to customize this car. You get a green on here, no matter what green you want, you kind of put on like a yellow or a gold type of pearlescent, and then you can have like a darker orange or a red secondary paint color, and you get this beautiful, like almost dragon scale looking Pegasi Zentorno in this game. We are here at my test track. I call it my test track. This is just basically where I test out the performance on all sorts of vehicles and my buyer's guides for the discounted cars, as well as the remove vehicle guides. But here, we're gonna take this car around this loop right here, and we're gonna make this right, make this left, go around all the way through, follow this road, and we will end up right back at this intersection. Basically, when it comes to this type of route, I do. A faster car will do this in sub two minutes and 30 seconds with absolutely zero driver error by myself. The Pegasi Zentorno is probably going to sit between 230 to 250, I would imagine, and then any slower vehicle than that is going to take you three minutes plus. Not that you have to necessarily be driving a super slow vehicle to take three minutes doing this course, but a lot of slower sports cars will end up being that amount. So that's how I like to gauge it. If I can get in between, you know, two minutes and 30 seconds and basically two minutes, 50 seconds, I think we're making pretty good time for this car. If it takes us longer, we're either on a really slow pace or we're driving a slower car. And if we're quicker, then we're on a fantastic pace. Or of course, we are driving a very fast car. So we're gonna be kicking it off right here. We're gonna head up this S curve, S turn, and then we're gonna make this left on the street right here. You can cut this corner, it's not really, too big of a deal, but the Pegasi Zentorno in GTA Online has always been, I think, a prized possession by players in this game, just because of the fact that, for one, listen to the sound, it sounds incredible. The exhaust notes on this car are fantastic, the looks and the aesthetics of the Pegasi Zentorno are incredible, it handles fantastically. I think you can get some great customization as well, and we actually got some updated customization features not too long ago with this car, so 
if you try and win it off the podium vehicle or as the podium vehicle this week you'll notice you have one of those newer liveries that you can rock on here in addition to that you also get some rear bumper options you get some front bumper options different hood options things like that you know there's you you get you know all the newer wheels that have been added to the game since uh launch that i guess the picasso season Toronto couldn't rock at first because we didn't have some of those classes of wheels things like that but nonetheless i think we're making good time right here actually whoops there we go. With max armor, the car didn't de deform that much, so that's good. I actually forgot to look at my timer to see exactly how good of a pace we were rocking, but I'm going to need to go back and watch this clip to see exactly at what point um, I started. That way I can give you guys the official time. So I'll have to complete this, end it, watch it back, and then I can let you guys know in like an updated thing before we check out the next vehicle that I want to talk about, the next free vehicle for this weekly event here in GTA Online which is the Ocelot Arden. It's a sports classics vehicle. It's weaponized. I think you guys will greatly enjoy checking out the gameplay of that as well. Now let's switch to our close-up perspective for those OG GTA Online vibes. Take these last few corners here, and we should be nearing the end of my little performance testing track that I like to do for all sorts of vehicles in GTA Online. I'm not the best driver, but nonetheless here we completed it. So three minutes, 57 seconds on the clip in total, but before I was talking, so let me end it, watch it back and see where we're at. Okay, and just watching it back, I basically started the track at one minute, 16 seconds into that clip and there were two minutes, 48 seconds left in that clip basically. So we set a two minute and 45 second pace, give or take here with this car, which is exactly where I want it to be with the Pegasi Zentorno. So this car gets a big, thumbs up by me. Now next up for our other free vehicle, the LS Car Meet prize ride for this week, it is the Ocelot Ardent, and you need to place top five in LS Car Meet series races for four days in a row to unlock it. Kind of a hefty requirement for this car, but nonetheless, you can unlock it. It released with the gun running update, and it's originally priced at $1,150,000. By the way, the Zentorno is $750,000 if you want to buy it, but the Ocelot Ardent is going to channel the design of the Lotus Esprit Sport 300 because of those pop-up headlamps you see, and the distinctive front end this car has in the game. The Ardent in GTA Online also is gonna excel with really good acceleration. It's got stable handling. The only problem is I think it has very noticeable understeer at the higher speeds that you can reach with this car, but it still has very good brakes, and so that's gonna allow for quick corrections during sharp turns and maneuvers. It also includes built-in machine guns. It is weaponized, so that's gonna deliver some pretty good firepower just against lightly armored targets if you wanna use it against them. Of course, they're gonna be less effective against heavily armored vehicles. They have a base damage of 20 and a fire rate of 1,000 rounds per minute. Now with that said, let's test out this car's performance out in free mode. All right, I know what you're thinking. Wow, how could you ruin the Ardent like this with this crazy looking livery? Everything looks bad, dislike, I'm blocking your channel, right? I kinda dig it. I was deciding between this and the Urban Warrior livery and I wanted to make this thing look like sort of, you know, a little bit more realistic, but at the same time still kind of keep it like a James Bond style weaponized vehicle because the Ardent is weaponized. It has front mounted machine guns on here. So if you want to actually modify this vehicle, you can modify it at a normal LS Customs or your auto shop or something like that. But if you want to add the livery options, if you're you know going into game and you're like, where are the livery options? I don't see them. You need to modify it at your MOC or of course your Avenger. That way you can actually, you can maybe do it at an arena workshop as well i'm not too sure about that one don't quote me i haven't tested it but let's check out the performance of this car when this when my clip hits a minute here we're gonna take off and do our standard route so again we're shooting i don't actually don't know what the performance is gonna be like on this car it may be a little bit slower if we can get just about three minutes on this track then i will be very happy but so far so good i mean you saw that car picked up speed so so fast and the speed in general not even just acceleration wise but the actual top speed seems really good the braking a little bit lackluster you wouldn't expect it to be absolutely amazing right the traction's great the handling is awesome that is one thing i could say so far just first impressions driving it for this video not that you have the tightest turning radius but you could see it's it's still very very good i, I was about to say fantastic maybe it actually is fantastic i don't know you guys can let me know in the comments if you've driven this thing around i mean I would say between this and like, you know, you get a vehicle like the Stromberg, whoa, the performance on the Stromberg I would say is not going to be as good, but of course the Stromberg is probably like a little bit more useful maybe. Same thing with the Toreador, of course the Toreador, meanwhile, sadly you can't take it on missions anymore, but I would say the performance of this Ocelot Ardent is absolutely amazing. Definitely seems quicker than its real life counterpart that it's based off of, 
and the fact that you get those front mountain machine guns. That also works great. You know, it's not like they do a ton of damage. They're good against light infantry targets that are on foot. You're not going to be taking down armored vehicles or anything like that. But just to have them on your car, it's a unique little feature that you can get on here just like you could put them on the Anis Sylvestra. Because I know a lot of players in the game didn't even know that the Anis Sylvestra actually has a weaponized option. Just kind of cutting through these corners here. I would say we're making good time. Right now we're about a minute and 45 seconds into this track. So I would say we may be at about that three minute mark. Of course, we were slowed down by maybe 10 or 15 seconds because of that crash. Probably more like 10 seconds or something like that. So hoping we don't crash again because that would really, really slow us down. But I would say the performance on this, very solid. Is it worth the $1,150,000? Even if you just pay full price? I would kind of argue, yeah. But at the very least, do the LS Car Meet Series races. Place top five, you have four days to do them now, you know, throughout the rest of the weekly event. Get it done. Do not waste any time. Get this car, you know, not for free because you got to spend a little bit of time unlocking it, but you don't need to pay anything, right? So that's pretty good. You don't need to spend the normal $1,150,000 for the normal retail value of this car off of War Stock. You can just get it through the LS car meet, and you are pretty much good to go right here. And like I said, I maybe would go with a little bit of a different livery option. I kind of want to keep this livery on this car, though, because it makes it look you know, military, desert themed, a little bit futuristic, a little bit retro all at the same time. Here we go, finish line. That was two minutes and 50 seconds. So minus the two crashes I had right there, we would have been close to probably what, two minutes, 35 seconds? That is not too bad for this car right here. I will say, you wouldn't think that this car would go that fast, but actually it kind of does. It's a very quick car in this game and it has fantastic handling, I must say. That's my favorite part about this Ocelot Arden. But I think with all that being said, we're gonna wrap things up right here. Of course, I recommend you guys try and unlock both of these vehicles this week, both the Pegasus and Torno as your Diamond Casino and Resort Lucky Wheel Podium vehicle, and also try and unlock the Ocelot Arden here at the LS Car Meet. Both are worth it. If you guys want to see another weekly episode on the free vehicles next week for the podium vehicle as well as the prize ride, let me know. For this video though, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you guys found it helpful or if you just enjoyed it all. Check me out over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and I will see you guys in the next GTA 5 online video. Adios amigos.